Hi, this is Annie Grace, and I am here answering readers' questions. And today I have a question from someone I'm going to call B. She says, hi, Annie, I've been listening and reading to everything about you and your story. I've had a hard couple of years in terms of drinking. I had five miscarriages, which took its toll on me. I always thought I could control everything in my life and then was faced with the fact that I had no control over getting, getting pregnant. Eventually, I have a two-year-old boy, but my anxiety about the whole process and everything got the better of me, and I started drinking again to just calm my nerves, and my husband and I are now separated. I guess my question is, how do you mend the relationships that you hurt while you were drinking? First of all, um, I just want to say a word about miscarriage. I feel that miscarriage is something that, in a way, is very similar to drinking. It's something that we feel shame about, and unbelievably really, because we feel some sort of fault in the whole thing. And I think that's just not true. And it's amazing how many women have experienced miscarriage. If you look at it statistically, it's a huge, huge percentage of women. Yet it's something that even among women, we don't often talk about. And so I just want to just say that you have a lot of courage to, to talk about it, because I think it's something that should be talked about more, and we should come together more in some of the, the pain. And I think it's very similar to um, you know, our relationship with alcohol, it's something that we don't talk about that hurts ourselves, hurts our families, and some t places takes lives, and, and we're just afraid to talk about it. So I think just saying, you know, uh, saying something and, and just, you know, good for you for that. And I guess the second part of your question about, like, how do you mend the relationships? It's so hard because you know for you something has fundamentally changed. And you look in the mirror and you say, I'm different. And you just want to go and say, hello, people in my life, can't you tell I'm different? This is different this time. Things have changed. And I'm not going to hurt you like that again. And I'm going to show up for you. And I'm going to be different. But the fact is, and we all know this, is that words and actions are just not the same thing. And um, so I think there's really pillars for me about rebuilding trust. And the pillar one is really transparency. You know, being incredibly transparent about what you went through and the shifts that have happened for you and where they are. Um, and then pillar two is just vulnerability. And it's about laying it out there and saying about why things were hard for you. For so long, we've been hiding so much in a way. We've been trying to keep it all together, trying to keep a smile on our face, even through the most difficult of times, including you know miscarriages. So, so gut-wrenching and heartbreaking. And then we're trying to just show up to work and pretend everything's okay. And the vulnerability is the great connector of us all. It's when you can say, this is why this sucked for me. And this is why this was hard for me. And this is what I was ashamed of. And this is how I felt. I mean, vulnerability really, really fosters relationship and trust. And then third and probably most important is responsibility. And it's taking responsibility for what happened without expectation of the other person coming around or not coming around and just being able to say with 100% genuine sincerity, look, what, what I did and how I was and the choices I made affected you. And I am so genuinely and deeply sorry about how I affected you. And I just want you to know that I need nothing from you. I just want you to know that I am taking responsibility for that. I'm taking responsibility for how I may have hurt you in the past, and I am doing these things in my life to change. And I know that words are cheap, and it's going to be my actions, so I don't need anything from you. I don't need you to t give me an girl or tell me everything's going to be... Um, because so often we enter into these relation or these conversations and we're looking for something, right? We know things have changed, things have shifted in us. And so we're like, why can't he see it? And actually we're entering into these conversations almost selfishly because we want to just mend things. We want things to just be better. And why can't they just see it? And I'm never going to do that again. And I'm a different person. But the reality is that the trust that needs to be fostered and built will take time. And so taking responsibility without anything expecting anything in return and just letting them know what's changed for you and letting them know that they can take as much time as they need and that you're really truly and deeply sorry and meaning it like really meaning it but then also just being there showing up doing what you say you're going to do you know being the person that you know that you've become and that you know that you are is just so powerful um, and I'd say that this part needs patience you know once you've really opened up once you've been transparent and vulnerable and taken responsibility in comes the patience because you're not in their shoes. You don't know how long or how deep or what they may have felt and just asking them for their feelings, taking it kind of on the chin, understanding that's how they were feeling, kind of building this relationship back up step by step and then being patient with them for how long it might come around. Um, but again, 
it's it's time and it's actions and it's showing up every day those are the things that build trust you know not words about how you've changed because chances are most of us have said oh well um, I'm different and we said it maybe a lot of times and we said that was the last time perhaps a lot of times and and so actually showing up for it I think is really really different um, and I think you just have to realize that in this in this patience you can't make demands on their trust because if if you're saying well it's been six months like why hasn't he forgiven me or why aren't things different now um, the truth is that if someone was to force trust if they were to say okay okay it's fine it's fine i'm over it and it wasn't real the foundation of your relationship wouldn't be real and to build this really true genuine relationship um i believe that you really need to allow them the time for the trust to spring up genuinely create if you will kind of the garden of those things that i was talking about the transparency the vulnerability the responsibility and the continued action of doing what you say you're going to do and showing up and being the you you know you can that really creates the fertile soil because trust is something very gentle that can then blossom within that garden but if you're wanting to hear something from somebody just because it's going to make you feel better you could have them force something and it wouldn't be authentically true and so giving them that time to let it blossom within that fertile soil that you've created around being the most best authentic you i think is just really important but thank you so much b it's just such an important question and i think it's one that we all we all think about and it's just such a beautiful question too because it means that you're really sincerely at a place where you're like okay now what can I do to heal and mend these things? And, and I think that's just so beautiful. So thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for your vulnerability and sharing about your experiences. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi, are you looking to connect with like-minded people? Sometimes maybe you feel like as someone who knows all this information from the snake in mind or the alcohol experiment that you're living in a world of muggles and people just don't speak your language. That is why I created The Exchange. The Exchange is an online community where we meet face-to-face, -face, live video calls multiple times a week with people from all over the globe just to connect, to have somewhere you are seen and you're heard and you feel less alone and really that you can give back and get the support you need. So if this sounds great to you, check it out at thisnakedmind.com backslash exchange. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.